Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Power Life TV channel, Power Life TV broadcast. This is Pastor Brian. And Pastor Tasha. And we're here to give you another great broadcast. It's Tuesday. Yes. <laughs> Tuesday. This is the day that the Lord has made. We, we will, will rejoice and be glad in it. it. Uh, I want to... I, 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 I messed up the, the graphic. I wanted the people to see what we're talking about today. So here we go. Uh, we're talking about why can't we get along? Why can't we get along? And and I I really enjoyed yesterday's broadcast. Mm. You know, we started talking about different things that have to do with um, take taking a time out. And I believe we're going to talk about a, a little bit of that. How do you know when uh, you need one? Yeah. How do you know when you need one? <laughs> Uh, so make sure you get a pen, a pad, any way that you take notes and take some notes today. Today's mm -hmm. going to be good. Uh, we're talking about conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been dealing with this for a couple, about a week now, and mm -hmm. this is the second week. And so it's really informative and we really want you to be a part of, of what we're doing. So uh, get on Power Life TV channel. It is um, on YouTube. You click on the like, click on the subscribe, and then click on the notification bell. Amen. So let's get back into our scriptures again. I always like to read that. It's out of Genesis chapter 3, verses 6 through uh, 11. And it says, Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says that they knew that they were naked. Mm. Now, how did they know that they were naked? Because God never told them that they were naked. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? God clothed them with his very glory, his very yeah, the, essence. The first thing that follows sin is shame. It's shame. <laughs> <laughs> so they needed no one to tell them. Yeah. But one of the, uh, you know, earmarks of the fallen nature was self consciousness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just think, you know, when they were in the spirit, they were always others minded. Mm -hmm. And God aware. They were always God aware and others minded. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now all of a sudden they knew or yeah. intimately acquainted with mm -hmm. nakedness, intimately acquainted with shame. And I believe more people have conflict because they're more intimately acquainted with the problems in their relationships mm -hmm. than they are in the solutions. So true. And uh, it goes on to say, uh, and they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they, uh, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And verse nine says, then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? Where are you, Adam? And so he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And so we are dealing with a mindset now. Mm -hmm. uh, people who think a certain way. Yes. Uh, when, it, when you go into a relationship, many people go in with a, a negative mindset. Mm. And I think it's because of our modeling. Mm. I think it, it may be because of a divorce. Divorce. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Re past relationships. So a lot of times people will go into a relationship thinking that this is not going to work out. Mm. You know, I yeah. mean, I'm, I'm wasting my time. And so, you know, how do you deal with it? How do you break out of the mindset of constantly having conflict and break into a mindset that we can overcome things when they're presented to us. Right. Well, that's, you know, that's a change in belief system. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in, in his, his heart, heart, so is he. Mm -hmm. So that's I think good. the first thing I would do is get some scripture on it. Mm -hmm. I would open my Bible. Mm -hmm. That's good. <laughs> I would crack my Bible open and find scriptures that have to deal with contention and I have some in front of me. I have Romans 12 and 19. Mm. And it says, Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scripture says, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. So I would probably, if I was a person who tended to want to take revenge, which I'm not, mm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say, This is good. Father, help me, you know, not want, not 
do your job. Mm -hmm. Help me to not take revenge. Mm -hmm. You said in Romans 12 and 19 that vengeance is yours. So, Father, I give it back to you. And right now, help me to place my flesh under subjection of your word. Mm -hmm. And that's how I would... You know, the Bible talks about you speaking over yourself and, and praying over yourself in the Lord and doing that type of thing. Well, as you do that, mm, you know, good. as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As you begin to have new thoughts and new patterns of thinking, you begin to change your perspective on things. I like that. And then also what the new patterns of thinking will do is it'll change the way you speak. Absolutely. Yeah. You cannot speak faith-filled words if you don't have a faith-filled belief system. Yeah. It all starts there. Yeah, and it's and, and and you believe whatever you believe is what you see. Right. Right. Yeah. So so we believing is seeing. Believing is seeing. And so let's let's deal with something because I believe what we need to introduce yes. are new thoughts. Right. I think, you know, have you ever heard someone say things like, I can't even see myself yeah. driving a car like that? Well, mm -hmm. you never will. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Because if you can't That's see it in your heart, uh, you'll never get to that destination. For instance, uh, uh, Martin Luther King, he said on his I Have a Dream speech, he said, uh, I've seen over the mountaintop. Mm -hmm. And he said, I may not get there with you, but I know what it looks like, mm -hmm. in essence, is mm -hmm. what he was saying. He, he had a belief. He he saw a picture in his spirit that was so vivid that it he didn't have to see it materialize wow, 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 good. to yeah. know that it was going to come to pass. Yeah, that's so good. And that is what believing really is. And if you're not liking what you're seeing, you have to change that believing. Mm -hmm. So let's get a new image on relationships. Get a new image on the inside. Let's get a new, yeah, you know, uh, and then I'm going to say this and then we're going to move on. Okay. But I always remember when we were, you know, as we were getting married, or as right before we got married, I always remember seeing myself in a good relationship. Oh, yeah. I, I just knew that you and I were meant for each other. Yes. And it's so funny because I always, I always wanted to be a good wife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and I always thought, you know, Lord, if I could just find a good husband, mm -hmm. you know, a really good, good. husband, I'm going to be the best wife. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking that, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't know. I think I've done all right. You did great. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> But and that's the same thing, you know, is is what you saw, you know. Yeah. You, uh, I I saw that we were going to uh, we were going to get along. Oh yeah. Um, we were friends in the beginning. Oh yes. And, yes. And I and I always felt like you could never do enough bad that would stop me, you know, from loving from, lo from loving you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I just knew we was gonna work through it. I just right. Knew it. Yeah. Right. I, I I saw it, you yes. know. Um. The Bible talks about Jesus mm. enduring the pain and the shame of the cross because he for the joy he saw the joy he saw the he saw us on this side what we're doing today you know those of right. you who are born again we talked to a, a person the other day and and they got born again you know and the joy mm -hmm. that comes from that right it, it, it's amazing right and this afternoon you were you were noticing. And I think we always do things for each other, but we don't always put a bulletin board out for mm -hmm. what we're doing for each other. Mm -hmm. But you recognize that I was doing some things, you know, to, to keep you in mind and to put you first and to consider you. And I noticed that you made the comment, you always trying to do something for me, mm -hmm. huh? And it's like, mm -hmm. that's what, that's how you know mm -hmm. that you have a good relationship. You're not always looking for the other person to do something for you, do something for mm -hmm. you, do something. And even that's when right. you do something for your spouse, you're not saying, hey, look, see, look, I did it right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. don't need a pat on the back. Yeah. You didn't that's do so it for good. that in the first place. Mm -hmm. You did it because you loved them. Mm -hmm. And so, I don't know. And I think you should verbalize a thank you. Mm -hmm. But I also think, you know, some, there's a, a point in relationship where you don't need a thank you. Mm -hmm. you the, gra the gratitude or the good feeling you got was from doing something nice for somebody else and expecting nothing in return. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not even a pat on the back. Right. Exactly. I did it. I did it because I love him. Yeah. Or I yeah. love her. Yeah. 
Well, I want to uh, jump back into what we were talking about yesterday, and that was uh, how to take a time out. Uh, the the times that you're going through conflict, um, you can tend to react in a lot of situations. <laughs> yes. And, uh, <laughs> and not respond. And so uh, when you're in that heated moment, mm. how do you handle it? Okay. And so let's talk about that. Okay. I think growing up helped us a lot (laughs) Mm -hmm. because I think when you're young in your relationship and you're only thinking about you and I think sometimes you don't see yourself Mm. in an argument Mm. you see say that again you don't see yourself (laughs) you only see what the other person is is doing doing wrong. wrong and I think growth and maturity got in there and you realize wait a minute I'm being contrary for no good reason. Mm -hmm. Or wait a minute, I'm being grumpy today. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, Mm -hmm. or wait a minute, we're tired. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. and so... I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Or I'm only thinking of myself. Yeah. I think a lot of arguments would end. Mm -hmm. If one of the people in a conflict would say, you know what, wait a minute, time out. I'm sorry. This was my fault. Mm -hmm. I was only thinking Thinking of of myself. myself. Let me take a deep breath and hear you out. Mm -hmm. Because right now I see that I'm only thinking of myself. Now that has to come from a genuine place. Yeah. Because if it's sarcasm, your spouse will hear it 10 miles away. Yeah. It could be, it could be genuine and your spouse might think they heard it because they never heard that out of your mouth before from a genuine place. Yeah. Uh I I think this is good because what you're doing (laughs) is you're saying, I, I, I'm, I'm doing self-evaluation. Yeah. And and (laughs) we, we've always said this, that success comes from people who learn how to self-evaluate. Now, I'm not saying being self-absorbed or uh, self-centered or not none of those things, but what we're saying is recognizing that maybe you are the problem. You know, maybe the problem is not the spouse. Maybe it's coming out of me. Yeah, I always say that, you know, it takes two people to argue. Mm-hmm. It takes two people to have a conflict. Yeah. And so usually in an argument, we feel like the other person is 99% wrong. <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> but if you did 1% wrong, yep. aren't you responsible for your 1%? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So here's yeah. one really great I'm thinking way about right now. Go ahead. to yeah. end an argument. Yeah. Start by apologizing for your part mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. you know you did this wrong. You don't have to nail them on their part and you don't have to say this is the only thing I've done wrong. Mm-hmm. But it's good to take two steps back. Now, can I just say this? When you're in that fight or flight, in that time of frustration and accusation, you are not going to think that way. Mm. So how do you know you need a timeout here? If you got your list, if you got your paper, start writing this down. Mm -hmm. Number one, your fists are clenched. Mm. You need a timeout. Mm -hmm. How about this? Your face is red. You need a timeout. How about this one? You are breathing fast. Mm. You ever breathe fast yeah. when you're upset? Yeah. No. Yeah. Or deeper, maybe, maybe right? Deeper. <laughs> uh, it, it's it's more. It's not like a. It's more like. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that that's that's breathing fast. A lot. Sir. A lot of people. A lot of people know what I'm talking about. And well, how about this one? Are the tears streaming down your face? Yeah. By the time you're crying, you're frustrated. Yeah, that's true. You're angry, you're upset, Mm -hmm. you know, and you're not in a place of wanting to think straight or be- Or wanting to hear. Or wanting to hear. What you want at that point is to be heard. Mm -hmm. And the step in the right direction comes from you being the first one to do what's right, Mm -hmm. not the other person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We always think the other person has to be the first one to do. No, no, no. Don't wait on them. You you be first. Yeah, that's good. Um, the most mature one in an argument is the first one to do what's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, how about this? How do you know you need a timeout? You feel like screaming or throwing something? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, some people, they don't even keep glass dishes anymore because they already know if they get in an argument, something is going to fly across the room and Mm -hmm. get broken, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, That's a good... If you're raising your voice and screaming, Mm -hmm. you need a timeout. Now, I want to go back to something you just said because when you said it, it just kind of sparked something in me. You said it takes two to tango, right? Oh, yeah. Two to have a conversation, two to have an argument. Mm -hmm. So... You got one spouse that is, okay, 99% wrong, (laughs) and you have another spouse that's 1% wrong. Mm -hmm. What I'm finding is most people refuse to take responsibility for that 1%. Mm -hmm. And so they'll say things like, well, I wouldn't be this way if this person wasn't that way. That way, right. That's blame. That's blame. And I know we talk about blame all of the time, (laughs) but- that's a defense mechanism. It's, it's, it, it really is. And we talked about this. We talked about this a uh, <laughs> couple of weeks ago when you and when you have uh, defensiveness and you have, uh, what were the other? So you have defensiveness, you have stonewalling, you yeah. have uh, contempt. Yeah. Uh, did we complaining. say complaining? Complaining. Yeah. yeah and those. So, so all of these things, you know, if you want to... Release yourself from the conflict. Mm -hmm. You will not blame. Yeah. You know, here's the thing. I know a lot of people don't recognize this, but complaining has is is on the top 10 list for things that causes divorce. Mm. In other words, for some people, their criticizing and complaining is the death of their relationship. So being overly critical. So if you're overly critical, Mm. you got to realize you're to blame as well, you know, as Mm -hmm. a person you're criticizing. You're finding everything wrong with them, but you might not see that your complaining is what's causing the relationship to fail. Yeah, yeah. And and then and then and then to recognize your part. You know, we said this I think what three times today. Recognize your part. That's not as four. So if you are in a place and you're constantly looking at, well, I wouldn't be feeling this way if it wasn't for this one, you need a timeout. Yeah. Here's another one. Are you afraid of your partner's intensity? Mm. Mm -hmm. Are they getting a bit too intense to a point where you feel afraid? Mm. Wow. That's a, hey, you need a timeout. Yeah, that's true. You need a timeout. Yeah. How about this one? Do you feel emotionally closed off? Now, I don't like that. I like the word withdrawn. Mm. You're done. Mm -hmm. You're spent. Mm -hmm. You're, you're, you've been flooded. You're just done. Mm -hmm. Guess what? At that point, you need a timeout. Yeah. Because sometimes wow. the pressure wow. builds so much that you feel like a cork is about to pop or something. Mm-hmm. When you get to that point, it's not good to keep going. Mm-hmm. It's good to take a few steps back. Take a time out. Wow. How about this one? Uh, you, things have become too intense for productive interaction. Mm. Whatever I mm. say from this That's point on word. is not going to be productive. It's not going to be good. Yeah. When you get to that point, you need a time out. So if I'm being petty in this conversation, it's time for a time out. <laughs> oh, yes. I mean, some people use humor as, yeah. you know, yeah. a way to deal with things that are full, are, are, are stressful. Stressful, mm-hmm. you know, and I think we need to recognize our partner and understand and study our partner enough to know what's happening, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, humor could be used in that way, but at the same time, humor might block a conversation, Mm -hmm. especially if it makes the other person more frustrated. Yeah. So rather than power through a very tough conversation, it might be good to just take a few steps back. Yeah. Well, and and I go back to that part you you said about product, uh, productive interaction, you know, uh, this this thing about you said humor, right? Uh, is or not playing the dozens. A, a playing, that, but that's not productive because mm-hmm. what humor can do is it is your relate your way to relieve the stress. But for another person, it could be looked at as uh, you're being cynical, you're being mocking. Yeah, you're, you're mocking me, you know, yeah. or you're not being serious about what we're talking about. So all of that is bad, you know, and if you feel like you have to just, you know, laugh it off or whatever, go in another room. Yeah, well, some people, you know, not all laughs are from it being funny. 
Yeah, that's Sometimes, what I'm saying. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. And if if you're if you have a nervous laugh. Yeah, exactly. I think it's okay. Not when you're in the middle of an argument. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying. But it's okay to tell your spouse, sometimes when I'm afraid and nervous, I laugh. Yeah. But then now we... It's annoying. Yeah. And I'm, I, I don't know where I picked that habit up. Yeah. Or maybe you do know where you picked that habit up. But whatever the case, just be honest and just say what's going on. But that, that goes back to communication, too. You know, mm-hmm. and... You know, you got to learn how to be assertive. You have right. to know how to have active listening. And most people don't know how to communicate, mm-hmm. which was the problem in the garden. Oh, Adam yeah. didn't communicate to his wife. Yeah. And so since there was a communication breakdown, there's a constant conflict. Mm-hmm. And so you're going to have to learn how to speak. You yeah. got to learn how to say what you mean and mean what you say. And yeah. then learn how to actively Listen, right? To such the a such a easy. It sounds easy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and so you know, uh, what physical and emotional reactions indicate that you need a timeout? So um, some of the things that, and I, I think we're gonna stop with this. But some of the things that I know shows me that I need a timeout is when I start getting like this. Um, it's almost like my blood pressure goes up, my heart mm-hmm. starts beating fast, you know. Uh, I, I tend to uh, kind of, and I say withdraw, but it's like I almost just don't want to talk about it anymore. Uh, yeah. You know, it's like before I say something crazy, let me just not talk about it anymore. I think sometimes, I, I think sometimes I'll talk to myself a little bit. Yeah, talk I'm to, so yeah. angry, I'll start talking to myself. Yeah, I can't believe such and yeah, such. Yeah. And when you find yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, talking to yourself about a frustrating situation that lets you know it's time for you to take a time out, yeah. breathe. And I, I think what you said was so good earlier. You said just pray about it. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, what I find that I'll do is I'll wrestle with the issue mm-hmm. until I finally get to, to to the point, much like Jacob did. Yeah. You know how yeah. Jacob wrestled with God mm-hmm. I wrestle with the things that bother me at times mm-hmm. until wow. I give wow, it good. to God yeah I love that psalm that talks about you know I was upset and I thought you know why are the unbelievers getting blessed more than the believers and then I went into your sanctuary yeah. it's amazing to me it's mm. amazing to me how when I step into the sanctuary mm. and I get into the presence of the Lord he shows me things plainly. Mm-hmm. Now I don't have to be upset about it anymore. Yeah, I can give it to God and I can give it to Jesus. And now he can give me the right answer for this terrible situation. You mm-hmm. know, what do I do with this Lord? Mm-hmm. And he always shows me the right thing. It's amazing how when you wrestle with God, you find yourself leaning on it. Yeah, that's the truth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And God would rather... Uh, you wrestle with him, then wrestle with your spouse because God oh, can yes. handle it. Mm-hmm. God knows the right words. God God's knows, about the only one who can he, handle He's you the only in a fight. one that can handle you in a fight. <laughs> and you know, and people probably hearing this going, wrestle with God. What do you mean, wrestle with God? I'll never do that. Well, you know, some of you need to. Because mm-hmm. what happened with Jacob is that he he lost his identity during the fight. Right. And what what do I mean by that? He lost the identity of Jacob and gained the identity of Israel. Israel, right, yeah. which is prince. Prince. Yeah, of he, God. he became a prince of God. Mm-hmm. And what does a prince do? Well, a prince is in line for the throne. Yeah, yeah, that's so good. Yeah. A, but, a prince is also the king's son. Yeah, that's so good. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. And so he's close. He's close. Mm-hmm. He's close. And so, yeah, you do want to wrestle with God if it means bringing your problems to him. And you might insist that you're right. But if you really listen to God when he talks, a lot of times he's going to tell you, no, no, baby, you're wrong. You're handling this wrong. You're not doing it my way. Mm. You're not listening to my voice. Mm -hmm. You got to get to my face if you want to hear my voice. My hand is over here. You always want my provision, but my answers are found in my face. Yeah. Yeah. In other so words, good. get in a relationship with God. That's so good. Amen. But <laughs> well, we're going to stop right there. I know y'all enjoyed that. I did. Amen. <laughs> and I want to I want to uh, 
continue on in this subject. Okay. I think it's really good. We're helping people. Uh, y'all let us know how it sounds. Amen. Y'all let us know what you're learning. Uh, I want to give you an opportunity to sow into these messages. Listen, these are the kind of things that are priceless, you know. I agree. And what, what you're hearing is something that you can always take with you. Yes. The word of God is a living word. Yes. And it never leaves your life. Yes. And so uh, you, maybe you heard something today that, that you said, you know, wow, I need to hear that again and again. Well, the best thing to do is sow into a message. Yeah. You yeah. know, that's we, that's how you partake. Yeah. We think if I watch it again and again, then it's going to get in me. And that's true. But when you sow yeah, into think a message, about a it's, seed. A, it's a hook. Yeah. Think about a seed. So a farmer is out there putting seed in the ground. If mm-hmm. you say, here, take these seeds and put this in the ground with your seeds. When harvest time comes, you get to partake of that harvest. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. (laughs) Nobody's going to say, okay, here, get your seeds back. Mm -mm. You're going to get a harvest. You get the harvest back. And the harvest is always greater than the seed. Amen. Amen. (laughs) So so a seed, you have uh, ways to give. Pull out your smartphone, take a picture of the QR code, or you can go to wordpowerchurch.com. Click on the donate tab. Amen, Amen. Pastor. Amen. I love y'all. Amen. We're going to go ahead and bless you. Okay. The Lord Lord bless bless you and keep you. you. The The Lord Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. We declare shalom and blessings blessings over your life. And we declare that Jesus Jesus is Lord and and he's he's upholding all things by the word of his power. Be blessed. We love you. We'll see you next time. See you next time. Amen.